Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Color Splash video, we'll be taking this image and converting it into this image, black and white, with a real bright color splash in here for the butterfly. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you subscribe to my channel to get all of my videos, and also click the like button for this particular video as well. If you want to learn more about Photoshop, take a look in the description for the links to my complete training on working with and using Adobe Photoshop. Okay, let's get to it. To create this Photoshop color splash effect, there are just a few basic steps. We need to separate out the color part of the image and then convert the background part of the image into a black and white. We're then going to do some tweaks in here adjust our values in the back, adjust the overall colors, and do the same thing here for the butterfly as well with some little tricks of making this really pop out like this. All right, let's go ahead now and see how this is all done. I'm just going to hide that one. Now we're back to our original. Now the first thing you need to do is to make a careful selection around the butterfly. So we can just make a layer mask that shows just the butterfly. Now I made my selection using the Pen tool to create a path, which is right there, pen tool. I just did a real careful selection with the pen tool. Now I have a link in the description for a video just about how to use the pen tool to create paths and selections. So if you want to find out more about that, just click on that and watch that video. I'm just bring that up here. Here's my working path. There it is. So there's this nice careful path using the pen tool made around the butterfly. Okay, once we have that, let's go to our background layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer. Just drag it down to the new layer button, just like that. There's our duplicated layer. I'll hide that just for a minute. So there's our background, and then there's our foreground. I'm just going to rename this one here. So we know what that is. That's our butterfly layer. This will be black and white in just a minute, and this will be the color aspect, color part of our image. Now using the direct select tool over here, come inside of the path. There's the path. Come inside of the path, right click, and click on make selection. Now I have mine set with a feather radius of one pixel. That just helps to soften up the edge and get rid of some of those jaggies that sometimes show up. You can also do anti-alias, which I help on there as well. Choose OK, and there's our nice little selection. Notice that I didn't bother with the legs out here. They're just black and they'll, be, they'll work fine either way so there's no real problem on that. So there's a nice careful selection. Once you have your selection made just hit on hit the button down here, the layer mask button and there's our layer mask. Now if I hide the background you can see we've now removed the background from around that butterfly. Okay there we go. Easy enough. Now let's come down to our background. I just hit our butterfly layer. Come down to the background and let's see what we can do to convert this into a black and white image. And for that, we'll go up here to Image, come down to Adjustments, and Black and White. Now the main thing you want to do with converting to black and white is you want to get as much contrast and separation of values in your image as possible. Notice that this has already given us some basic settings in here. If I turn off the preview, there it is, like that. Now if we look at the image, it's pretty much red. It's all in the red range. There's a little bit of yellow in here, a little bit of magenta showing up, but it's pretty much in the red range. So that's what we care about, the reds, the yellows, and the magentas. So we're going to be playing with our sliders a little bit to see if we can just increase the value range in here. So I'll start off with the reds, and I'll kind of move that up so it goes real bright, real fast, or kind of dark. Actually, it comes we go just a little bit to the left just a touch like that. I don't want to go dark on this like that. That doesn't look good. But if we go back to our 60 and come just a touch to the left, we get a little more value range in here, a little more separation inside of the flowers. A little bit easier to, to make out the different flowers this way. So I'll bring the reds down just a touch. Now on the yellows, let me just go up and down just a bit and see what we get looks like if I pull the yellows down a little bit, I'm just watching the flowers up in this area here, 
and you can see if I bring it up and down there's a few spots where you get a little bit of darkness that comes in that just helps to separate out those flowers. So I'll pull the yellow down quite a ways. You know, ignore the butterfly, we don't care about that. All we care about are just the flowers. Again, what I'm trying to do is bring in as much detail as I can with this convert to black and white. Let's now look at our magentas. And if I pull this up, it's kind of lightening the lightest part of the flowers. If I pull it down, not as much, I'm just losing light. So this really is hitting the light end of our flower. So I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. Let's I kind of rock these back and forth so I can see what the effect is. So I'll go up just a bit on that. So my final settings here are 57 on the red, negative 28 on the yellow, and 92 on the magenta. And the blues were already at 20% originally. So that just gives us a bit better rendition in there. So here's our original. And there we go, getting as much value range as possible in here for as much detail as possible. Choose OK. There's our black and white. Let's now bring our butterfly back in again. So there we go. There is your basic color splash. Simply separating out your foreground from the background, converting the background to a black and white image. Now we can make this much, much better by adding a bit more excitement to this. So first thing we're going to be doing is to take our butterfly layer and let's just make a copy of this layer just like that there's our copy we'll now put an adjustment layer on this and have some fun with this one so we'll go up here to layer come down to our adjustment layers and we're going to be coming down to the gradient map right down there click on that one where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask make sure that's selected this will then link this effect onto just that one layer. Choose OK. Notice right now it comes in at the default of black and white, kind of makes it into a black and white image. Click on the gradient right here and this brings up your gradients. Now yours will probably look, let me just reset these, look like that. That's your default set. What we want to go here is for the Color Harmonies 1. Now I'm clicking on this little gear icon right there. Click on that. Click on Color Harmonies 1. Click OK gives us a different set of gradients. When you want is that first one right there. The very first one is called Spectrum, I believe. And just, there it is, yeah, Spectrum. Just gives you kind of these really wild colors. I'm not that concerned with the part over the black. I'm more concerned with the stuff in here, which would be over the yellow. Let's choose OK. Now if I show and hide that, you can see how it's converting the butterfly into these really strange colors, and that's fine. We now need to blend this into our image. So let's go up here to our blend modes right there and come down here on the blend mode to overlay. And that overlays that on top of and kind of blends it into our other colors. So now we can look at this. There's the original and there it is. So we really accented those colors. We made them very, very vibrant here by doing this. Now come down to this layer, we're going to be doing a second blend on this one. So our adjustment layer has a blend. Let's also do a blend on the butterfly above here coming into the butterfly below. Let's repeat that same blend mode here. And that's the overlay blend mode. It just makes it a little bit richer as you can see. So there we go, real rich. But it's too vibrant at this point. So let's come back and tweak the adjustment up here for the gradient map. Let's just switch this over here to the color dodge. Come right down here. That just kind of tones that down a little bit. So there it is without. There's the normal. There's the accentuated colors by taking the image, duplicating it, and then overlaying the original back onto itself. Kind of accentuates the colors right there. And then by bringing in the color dodge for our gradient map, it really makes everything vibrant, mostly since we're looking at the color dodge area here, mostly in the lighter areas. So our blacks still stay pretty black, but the lighter areas have that additional color range in there. Okay, that takes care of the brightness on this. Let's do one more little thing. I don't want to have this much stuff happening on the body. Let's kind of separate the body out from the wings, get a little bit of separation in here. We can do that 
on the layer mask for the top layer or top butterfly right there. I just want to tone that down a little bit. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush and you see our size. There's a brush size. You can kind of see it right there. That's okay. I'm going to bring the opacity down to 50%. Now if you notice over here, white is where the butterfly is showing. Black's where it's hiding. So let's make sure we're on black. We are. And I'll just paint over the butterfly's body here with that 50% black. Where it's white, we have pure transparency, 0% opacity. Where it's black, we have complete opacity. And where it's gray, we can kind of see through it a bit. And that's what we've done here. We just kind of tone down that butterfly so that the wings are brighter than the body. Just a little tweak. Let's now look at the background. Now, if you notice, because the butterfly's wings are so bright and they're real warm tone, the background tends to look cool. It almost looks like it has a bluish tint to it. It had a neutral tint before. It now has kind of a bluish feel to it just because there's so much yellow in here. So to help balance this out, let's put an adjustment layer in here on the background and then use that to kind of tone down that bluish effect. Again, there's no actual blue in here, but it looks blue because there's so much yellow in the butterfly. So come down to the background layer. Let's put an adjustment layer above this one. So layer and adjustment layer. And let's come down and do photo filter right there. Now in this time, don't click on this. There's no reason to click on this one. So leave it un unchecked where it says use previous layer. Leave that unchecked, choose OK. Now the default is the warming filter 85 and surprisingly enough that's exactly what I want is the warming filter. So if I hide this, there it is without and there it is with. So what we're doing is we're warming up the tones of the black and white just a little bit and by warming those up it helps to kind of blend in the picture a little bit better. It's a little bit more cohesive. It's still black and white but just a slight warmth. So there, there it is without and there it is with. And the butterfly just seems more appropriate in here if the black one has just a little bit of warmth to it. That's what we're doing there. Okay, for our final tweak on this, if we look at our picture, there's real big bright stuff in the background. It's really kind of annoying. I really want to tone down that background stuff. So to do that, let's make a copy of our background. Let's drag it down to the new layer button right there. There's our copy. On the top one in here, let's put a layer mask. There's our layer mask. I want to mask off the right hand side, leaving just the flowers on the left. Now, do this really carefully. I come back in and use the pen tool and do a real careful selection around the flowers and make it absolutely perfect. I'm not going to bother with that for this video. Let's just do this real fast. I'll grab the lasso tool and let's just do just a quick lasso right around the edge of these flowers. I'm not going to try to be absolutely perfect for this just to go ahead and get this thing finished here. There we go. And follow along, go through the butterfly's body. That's fine. This is in behind the butterfly, so it doesn't matter. Now, as always, you know, the better your selections, the better off the image will eventually look. But just for the sake of getting this video done more quickly here, we'll just do this one fast. Okay, and straight along the bottom. This little bit there, I'll fix that in a second. Right back here, back to our beginning. There we go. There's a little bit I caught right there. I want to get rid of that. So let's go up here and change my tool to subtract. Let me just kind of subtract this out right there. And now let's go back to add and see if I can get that in just exactly right. Just there it is. And then down here I need to add this bit in. I'll just draw a little loop right around that. That adds that in. And there we go. There's our nice little selection with the right hand side selected out. Let's now fill that with black because of course black hides, white shows. We're on black already. There is the paint bucket. We're on the layer mask. Look for that light outline. If you see it over here, just click on the layer mask and see it over there. Click in there. There's that black. That's fine. Okay, now we can deselect that. Come down to our background layer we can now adjust the values for the background layer to darken down that stuff in the background. So, back to my Move tool here, back up to Layer, and then down to Adjustment Layer. And let's put in a Levels Control in here. Now, you don't actually have to check it this time because 
there's only one layer there, but I'll go ahead and I'll check it just, just out of habit. So this only acts on that one layer. So this layer up here, the photo filter is acting on everything underneath the photo filter, which is on both of our black and white layers, which is what I want. This is only acting on the bottom layer down here. So the background is too bright. To darken down the whites, come to the bottom scale in here and move the white to the left. You see there, it just kind of darkens those down. And I think somewhere in here around 132, 133, looks pretty good to my eye. Let's see how it is before and after. Right there, there we go. And let's go ahead and choose OK on that. Looks fine. Last little detail. We look at the my little fast edge I did on this. It's a little bit, a little bit hard actually. I'm not really concerned about the light edges. That looks fine, but I am concerned about the hardness of that edge. We can fix that pretty easily. Let's go up here to this layer mask, and I'm just going to blur the layer mask itself just a touch. So filter, come down to blur, and Gaussian blur, and I'm going to all the way down. If I bring it up just about to one, maybe a little more, I'm just watching the edge right down here, and I'm just softening up that edge. Let's see how it looks. There's before, there's after. It just kind of softens down that edge, and it looks more natural. I think I can go a little bit higher on this. Let's try three. Looks even better. There we go. Since the flowers back there are kind of out of focus, I didn't want to have a sharp edge along there, so I just knock that back, choose OK. So a little bit of a Gaussian blur on the layer mask to soften up that edge. And there it is. We're all set. So there is how you do the Photoshop color splash effect with, of course, a few additional tweaks in here. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.